Hi folks, my name is Richard Douglas Kabir. I'm going to present to you a short video tutorial on how to use SPSS for your quantitative data analysis. SPSS is a very powerful software that can assist you in analyzing your data quantitatively. It's a simple to use software and it's self-explanatory. So in this video tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to get started, most especially for those people that haven't had the opportunity or been taught how to use SPSS. So I'm going to start from Genesis. The first point of a departure is for you to install the software on your computer, your PC. So having done that, there's bound to be an icon on your desktop. It depends on how the software has been installed in your computer. So if you are not seeing any IBM SPSS icon on your desktop, it's not a problem. It's there. There are different alternatives that can be utilized to access your, uh, the software in your computer. For example, one could go to the search bar at the bottom of your laptop or your PC. Then you type I, D, B, the search bar. Then it will pop up. For example, as we have here, IBM SPSS statistics, as well as IBM SPSS Amos 27. So in this demonstration, we are going to use the IBM SPSS statistics to the Amos. The Amos is for uh, when you are doing a structural equation modeling. That is where you make use of Amos. But in this Tutorial, we are going to use IBM SPSS statistics. Here, you have the sign here, like the Zigma sign. Then you double click on it. It will get opened slowly, gradually. The door is a bit slow, but surely it's going to open. Then you will have a window from like this. Then uh, in this demonstration, I'm going to open a new data set. Okay, now this is how it looks like a new page, we call it uh, Data Editor in SPSS. It looks like an express, uh, Excel spreadsheet, but the way it functions is quite different. I remember the first time uh, someone introduced me to SPSS. And when I look at the spreadsheet, a form of Excel. I thought is uh, something that is easy to use, most especially when you are capturing your data. So there are certain intricacies here that one needs to do in order for one to be able to impute data or to capture data.
the two, this spreadsheet. So at this point in time, I'm going to explain to you uh, the different icons that one can see here. For example, at the top here, as you could see, we call this place the title bar. The title bar displays the title of the project that you are working on. At this point in time, as you could see here, this one is untitled because it hasn't been named. So then you have the software, the name of the software, which is IBM SPSS Statistics, as well as the name of the window that is opened. So this window is called the data editor. So this one will take me to where I need to explain the different types of windows that you have in SPSS. Essentially, we have three types of window. We've got the data window, which is the uh, data editor. We've got the, the syntax. We've got the syntax window. Then we've got uh, the output window. The editor or the data editor, that is where you see your variables, your data. Then the output window is the window where your output of your uh, analysis is being displayed. Then the syntax window is where you have the programming, like the arrow program. So we are going to talk much in detail about that in due course. Now, below the title bar, you have different icons, length, horizontally. The first one is the file, the edit icon, the view icon, the data, transfer, right. These are used to perform different functionalities in SPSS. For example, if you want to open file, you can make use of the icon file. For example, if it is a new file, uh, depending on the, the type of window that you want to open, like I explained to you, uh, you got three types of window in the SPSS. The first one, as I said, is the data window. Let's see. Is it okay? Like the ones we've opened. Then you have the sitters where the program or for operations that are being performed during the course of your analysis is written here. Programs like uh, in the programming language, in the machine language. Right. Then you have uh, the output as well, the output window, right? Which displays the output of uh, your analysis. Right. Okay. Where we are now? Okay. Right. Now, besides uh, utilizing the file function to open the new files, right, then you can as well uh, utilize the icon to import data sets from different software. For example, if you've got existing database, Right, then you could export 
from they can import them. You can import from such database. Then you can import as well from Excel file, CSV file, test data, and okay, and so on and so forth. Then you see this is the icon for you to save. You need to save your document, right? If you want to export from the SPSS to other software like Excel, whatever, then yeah, it's possible. You can as well do that. Then, okay, these are the uh, functionalities associated with uh, the file icon. Welcome dialog, right? This one is, you can utilize this to go to uh, the repository whereby you have a different data set that have been stored in the software that we could use as a demo to practice uh, data analysis. You see, the recently used uh, data right, will be shown here. When you click here, right now, as you could see, these are uh, the different files that I have been working on, recently used files. Right, then that is for that. You have uh, the icon for to do editing, the edit icon. Here you have a copy and paste and all those normal functionality of uh, the edit icon in the, on the normal computers. You have them as well here. Then you have the view. Right, the status view, the two bar view, whatever. Then you have a very important icon here with the data. This is uh, the functionalities that you can utilize uh, to manipulate your data, to define your, uh, for example, this one you can use it to define the variable properties. You can copy data properties. Then you can define the data term, define multiple responses set. For example, if your data set is composed of multiple responses, then you can utilize this validation. Then you can use this to identify duplicate cases. If in your data set there happens to be uh, duplicate uh, cases that uh, you want to synchronize and uh, make sure that uh, uh, the data set is not duplicated, you can make use of uh, this icon. Here, this identify unusual cases, uh, compare data sets. And if you want to sort uh, cases, you can use that. If you want to sort variables, you can transpose uh, variables, you know, then you can use this icon. If you want to merge files, you see, there are a lot of stuff that one could use, you know. Uh, if you want to maneuver your data, there are a lot of case, uh, icons here that are very useful for you to be able to uh, do those uh, functions. Then the aggregate, if you want to aggregate your data, you can do that. If you want to split uh, your files, then you see, this, uh, the use of these uh, functionalities will become much more clearer by the time we start uh, doing the analysis. Then you have uh, the icon to transform. This icon can be utilized to compute uh, variables. For example, you've got 10 variables in uh, your data set, and uh, there's need for you to uh, create another variable or to compute another variable, then you can uh, use this icon to do it, you know, to transform variable from one to the other. Then there's yeah, you record, if you want to record uh, a variable into the same variable, you can do that. Or you record, you want to record into different uh, variables. There's, through the use of uh, this uh, icon, it can be possible. Then you have automatic record and all this stuff. So that is for that. You have the icon to do the analysis, which is a very powerful, very essential, fundamental icon as far as uh, I 
the functionality of SPSS is concerned. Here you have the power analysis for the B proportion, correlation, and regression, beta analysis for the report. Then you have this for uh, the descriptive statistics, whereby, for example, if you did the frequencies, you know, you did the frequency of your data to be uh, displayed, or to be shown, you can use that descriptive analysis, whereby, uh, if you want something like the B, the media, or the board, you want uh, to know about uh, the summary of your data set, then uh, you can use that formula, uh, functionality on the icon. Then the table, if you want to customize your table, you can use that. Then comparing of B, if you are doing your financial statistics, you know, you know basically, in uh, the quantitative data analysis, we talk about descriptive statistics as well as uh, inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics is uh, the first point of uh, uh, analysis whereby you provide uh, the basic summary of your data. So, uh, by inferential statistics, you go deeper whereby you can be able to uh, talk about uh, generalizing your data in terms of uh, trying to know the relationship or rather they try to compare, you know, uh, different data so that you can be able to uh, make meanings of uh, the data. Here, in terms of inflation uh, statistics, you're talking about the mean, comparing the mean, and uh, you can as well do a sample t-test and uh, I'll do uh, independent sample t test based on the independent observation or independent variable. Then you can do a summary, you can do a pair uh, sample t test. Then you can as well uh, run uh, uh, one way or another and run this type of uh, different functionalities. We are going to discuss in details and uh, apply all these functionalities in due course. Then, yeah, if you want to do a correlation, you want to correlate, uh, the, try to find out the, the relationship between, sorry, between the variables, then you can use this uh, functionality. Then you can use a regression, if you want to run the regression analysis, go different types of regression analysis by binary logistic, Ordinal, if your data, the type of regression that you need to run depends on the type of data, uh, the type of data I mean, that you've, uh, data set that you have. For example, you have a parametric and a non-parametric. So you need to find out before you carry out your analysis or your regression to determine what type of Data or what type of data I mean that you got, whether it is uh, parametric or not parametric, you need to find out uh, the in terms of uh, the normality. You need to run certain tests like the normality test and see if it is uh, the normally distributed, you know, because you got different type of uh, tests that you need to carry out when you are doing your analysis. But no parametric parametric. So we are going to talk about that. And uh, the type of <coughs> data set you have, like what we call ordinal, nominal, numeric, or continuous variable. So you should be able to distinguish uh, between uh, those concepts where you have discrete, continuous, quantitative data and qualitative data. So we are going to talk more about those concepts in two calls. Right, so if you have uh, multiple responses, how do you analyze multiple responses? So yeah, you can use this icon. We are not going to make use of this icon at this point in time or during the course of this tutorial. I'm just trying to explain to you how all the different functionalities that you have in SPSS that can become handy and useful to
show you where you are doing your data analysis. Here, this one, uh, you can use it for uh, missing value analysis. For example, you've collected your data, and there happens to be some uh, missing data. So and, uh, you want to uh, fill in those uh, missing data. So there are, there's a way that one could utilize this software in order for, to compute uh, those uh, missing data. Good. Based on that, you have uh, also multiple imputation that uh, one could utilize to count for the missing data, right? Then you have uh, the graph. Remember? For example, if you are uh, doing your descriptive analysis and uh, you need to present in, in the pictorial form, uh, in the graphical form for better visualization, also present your data so that people can be able to visualize it. You can make use of a graph. And we got different types of graph. For example, if your data is uh, uh, not normally distributed, or for example, if you want to present a demographic uh, uh, data of your study, normally you use a bar chart of which the data are not uh, the data is not continuous. So if you are dealing with continuous data, then uh, you can uh, use uh, a histogram to present uh, uh, your, your data. So yeah, this uh, you got something like uh, the chart builder. You know, click it. It's something of this nature, right? Okay, it's not showing anything uh, because, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Now, you need to open a file in order for you to be able to use some of these uh, functionalities. Right. Then you have the utilities for the extension variables, you know. Then you have the extension, you have the window, like I've already explained, you've got three different types of window. Uh, yeah. We've talked about that already. Do it help? For example, if there's anything that uh, you are not so much uh, sure of, and uh, you need uh, a bit of uh, your kind of an assistant, then you can uh, click the topic and whatever the SPSS have got that uh, provision to be able to explain to you uh, certain things. Then, no, let's talk. Uh, specifically now on the, uh, about the data editor. So as we said before, this is uh, this page is called the data editor window, right? So the data editor window basically is divided into two, right? You have this, the variable views, whereby you can be able to see all the variables, right? Then you have the data view where you turn or where you click on the uh, views on, on the bar, at the bottom side. You click on this will show to show you the data view, the the variable view. The variable view, as I said, is where you can be able to visualize properly all the variables in your data set. Then the data view is where you will be able to see the data as it is contained in your data set. So and below. You have uh, an echo here, or here to show you the your status of uh, your the performance of your analysis, right? So essentially, this is how the data window looks like. So I have shown you how the sitters window look like, as well as uh, the output uh, window. So there are certain Things that we cannot, uh, some of this functionality will not be working at this state because there is no data set that had been loaded to the system. So, this bar, you see, you can, taskbar, you see, 
this bar that you could be you could use this bar for shortcut right you could use this bar for shortcut for example if you want to change from uh, test to numbers to numeric then you can use that you see you can use to select cases this are for shortcut right okay so essentially this is how to get started with the use of uh, SPSS. This is how you need to start when you as in, uh, someone that has a big use of Atlas before. So it, this, with this, uh, you can be able to uh, get started and, uh, you know, get started in a good form and be able to learn successfully. So uh, that is the end of this uh, short video tutorial. So my next video tutorial will be based on how to uh, capture data on SPSS, how to do the coding on SPSS, how to import questionnaires from Excel into SPSS and uh, do the coding. So that will be my next video. So watch out for my next video. Thank you.